Hi there, this is Ellen from the Charles and Ellen Academy, and today I want to discuss a little bit about this advanced architectural design. It's actually the pattern of the month, and as you can see, compared to last month's design, it's a completely different type of design. Where here you can see a lot of lines, a lot of details close to each other, whereas here it's more what can I say, basic lines in the background and the focus is on the florals. Here there are no florals. This is the Cologne Cathedral in Germany. Actually, cathedrals or churches in general are a very good architectural objects when you want to do some more advanced line work. For example, I did a similar thing here in our book for, let's see if I find it right away, for one of the here we go designs in italy we have the basilica di santa croce maybe <laughs> sorry that i do not speak italian i will have to learn it um, but in florence there is this absolutely incredible church and it's very similar in the process to the one of the month, the one in Germany. So these churches are very, very, very detailed and it's very difficult to capture all of that detail. So these are already simplifications of the original architectural structures, right? Um, we want to simplify it down into lines and basic shapes. So essentially you have got some um, rectangles, uh, you have some tri sorry, I was doing a triangle, but I meant rectangles, triangles, lines, even rounded shapes. Just distill it down to basic shapes. Actually, Charles made a great tutorial about basic shapes in drawing that you can find here on the channel as well. Uh, I will actually link to it down below in case you are curious. Because even though you're doing basic shapes, it's the same here. Even though you do a lot of basic shapes put together, it looks super advanced. Um, but please do not feel overwhelmed because it doesn't have to be. As we show in the book, for example, you really start just with the main contours. The main, it's usually the main straight lines for this design that I have here. You can see that I've done the same. I've worked the main straight lines that kind of create the foundation of the whole structure. You can see I did it here as well. We would consider these main outer contour lines to be the main lines, right? Um, after that is when you would start adding in some details and maybe overlapping some lines. So that is what I slowly started adding in here a little bit just to show you before finishing it off. Um, these darkened areas here on, on the kind of, I would say windows. I actually don't know if it's windows in reality, but it looks kind of like windows. And I simply just overlapped, layered, single stranded backstitch to make it a little bit thicker. Even here where it's even more filled out, it's still just a single strand, either just aligned or layered to create actually a little bit extra volume to it as well. All of this is still done with a single strand. Uh, and finally finishing off with any small details. So it's exactly the same here. It looks very advanced, but if you just take it one step at the time, uh, let me just get rid of the book. Just one step at the time, you will reduce the overwhelm and at the end you will realize, wow, I actually did it because it's kind of like the same technique throughout. It's the backstitch technique that we are working with. It allows you to create very neat shapes um, without changing technique, really. What makes it look advanced is that they are a lot of small stitches close together and that it's a single strand that I've used. So I was thinking to just demonstrate um, a little bit how the magic of these tiny stitches work. I'm just going to stitch one strand here together with you guys in this area. Let me just maybe zoom in a little bit more. There we go. Okay, so where are we? So I always keep my original drawing. 
This is a drawing that is going to be transformed into the pattern that you can stitch. So if you want to stitch this, by the way, check out the link below. It's part of the pattern program. Uh, by the time you watch this, maybe it's even a unique design later on. Uh, it's also for all of the Academy members, of course. Uh, you find all of that information below. But I always keep the design with me so that I can reference it, especially when I'm working on detailed designs. And I thought it's been a while since we did an advanced pattern in the program. So here we go. Uh, I am in this area. Where is that on the design? It's this window here. And you can see that there are, there. I, I just made the main outer line. So my transfer lines has almost completely disappeared because I've stitched on this for quite a while now, actually. So that's just one thing to be aware of. If you do use the carbon paper method for transferring, which we love, but if you do take a lot of time and maybe you've been thumbing a lot around here, um, it does tend to fade away with time. Now, it's not a big issue if you do have the original design next to you, so you can reference that. Um, and also if you do, like if you have stitched the main contours first then it will just be a matter of placing in the details in reference to the main lines. I actually have a full workshop on that too uh, inside of the academy so I'll put that below as well. All right um, so I made the main contour around and inside you can see there are some smaller rounded shapes as well this little detail here and across up there you've even got some small super tiny straight stitches around actually this is how it looks like when it's stitched so of course it cannot look as tiny as it does with the ink pen but the whole point of using a single strand is really to kind of um, imitate the look of a single strand so let's just start with the back stitch here. Now I work my way in to fill out these small rounded shapes that are inside of this outer one that I had already stitched. So you can notice that I pull through my stitches every time. In the last video, I showed you three ways to do a back stitch to do the back stitch technique and here I am using the first version and especially for these up oh, sorry got a little bit out of focus maybe I'm too close for these very advanced or well very but more advanced designs than I definitely prefer the first one because it allows me to really do these tiny stitches, be very precise. Okay, I did the second line inside and it doesn't have to be like absolutely, absolutely perfect. Sometimes we hang up ourselves on the fact that, oh, it's not like perfectly straight or perfectly neat in some in some way but when you put them all together it all it kind of it I would say it almost looks perfect I mean when you put them all together they kind of create a unit like a unified harmony which um, what can I how can I phrase it which, which puts much less pressure on each individual line because when put together, it will still look pretty and neat. So I'm just working with very short backstitch lines. Now here, this one, I thought it got way too wobbly. No problem, you can just very easily I'll in fact undo both of them. You can very easily just pull up any strand uh, or stitch that you just want to undo. I have a quite thick cotton because when you are working these advanced designs, it's great to have that extra support of a rigid cotton base. 
So depending on where you are located in the world, might be called different things. Uh, some has calls it Panama cotton in other places. I know in America, um, many of our students have successfully used the duck canvas, seven ounces, I believe. This one that I'm using, uh, I bought it in Sweden and it was just called a cotton canvas, um, quite frankly. Okay, so we have now made, looking back again, the main con like big line inside as well as the two round. Now we want to do this little darker shape there for the window. Oops, maybe we need one more stitch here. What I do is essentially just make one first stitch to kind of guide the placement and then I split through that um, or kind of layer extra stitches on top of that one that I already did to just thicken it a little bit. So I don't have to change to two strands just for that small area. I still use a single strand. I simply just layer it. See? Do the same on the other side. Okay, now up here I saw that there was a little detail, so let's do really tiny, tiny stitches of that. It's like a little diamond shape. We did a little, little diamond shape. It's similar to this one. The re you know, only difference is that this one is slightly smaller. Uh, the whole area, this whole window section is slightly smaller and also further down than the one to the left. And it's part of enhancing the perspective. So this one is supposed to be slightly further away. Let's say we look at this church from like this. This is the closest section to us. All right, there will also be a little cross up here with super duper duper tiny stitches. So I hope that this helps to just, sorry, my camera. With these tiny stitches, it has a difficult time to know where to focus. <laughs> I hope that this at least helps to understand a little bit better um, just that the stitch technique is still the same. It's still the back stitch or straight stitch. It's just a matter of reducing the size of the stitches, reduce the length of the stitches and do one line at the time and you will be able to complete even an advanced looking embroidery pattern. I find it so soothing to do this type of designs because it's like it, it feels so rewarding kind of when you see each line fall into place and it kind of grows in front of you um, and it looks very cool at the end. So we have a teeny tiny cross here. So what we have left, in addition to just, I'm going to finish this off, but I will not do everything with you in the camera here, because then it might be a very long video. Um, but what I do have left as well is just these um, areas in the shadow here. So this is really an effect of just enhancing again the perspective. Uh, if you're curious and interested to learn more about how to identify these areas, uh, I have I talk in depth about that in the thread sketching course. Um, it's a lot similar to different sketching techniques, architectural sketching. 
But these I will just fill out with vertical two-stranded split stitches to just fill out those surfaces. And it will really, really, you see how actually here when it's not filled out, you can see that it looks a little bit more flat. So adding some strong contrast to an architectural structure really just enhances it. It enhances the perspective. It makes it more like, wow, okay, this, this, is, this is it. So um, yeah, I really hope that this helps to tackle this design and if you are part of the member uh, membership part of the academy part of the pattern program you can download this design throughout the month inside of the curriculum section if you're not yet part come join us we have a lot of fun it's constantly growing in the pattern program we've got a new design on the first of each month um, the pattern program is also part of the academy membership in case you also want to take some of the courses and workshops um, as an academy member you get access to everything so um, it's the easy way to route to go if you are looking for expanding your art education uh, and you happen to love fiber arts and embroidery we're including some drawings and things like that as well because having basic knowledge about drawing it also allows you to improve in your embroidery as well now i'm gonna stop uh, babbling about it just check it out below if it interests you um, and i'll see you in the next one